Welcome to the shooting show, brought to you this week from Las Vegas. We're at SHOT Show, but first, Byron's ferreting rabbits in the borders. This week we've left the rifles at home to chase the humble rabbit on the Duke of Blacuse estate in the Scottish borders. Byron follows Steve Gray, seasoned ferreter Derek Parrott and his friends. Though Derek's preferred method for ferreting is using nets, today Steve is on hand with a shotgun to take down any bolt-in bunnies. Before any action begins it's time to fit the ferrets with a tracking collar. That'll come in handy later if they refuse to surface. We've also equipped Steve with a head cam to capture some first person action. However, early sport is not forthcoming and Derek is forced to use his ferret finder to search for an errant polecat that has gone to ground. It's only the first hole but there's no choice, they'll have to employ the spade and dig the ferret out. Fortunately they've brought more than one ferret so while Derek carries on digging the rest of the group head off to the next bury. The ferret is sent down the hole to do the business and Steve waits for his first shot of the day. And suddenly one has emerged and is racing off. He swings the shotgun but his shot misses and the rabbit escapes. Steve can't escape though and gets some gentle ribbing from the onlookers. You taking up landscaping? Mm -hmm. I missed it here. Yeah. I... After all that work there, eh? Moving on to the next hole, Steve is joined by the estate's grousekeeper, Stuart Davey. The pressure is now on, no more missing. The ferret initially goes to ground, but a commotion below the surface signals the game is on. Stuart has brought a brown in to deal with the rabbit problem and he quickly gets a chance to put it to the test. It's the first rabbit of the day and the kill goes to Stuart, but Steve is able to redress the balance just moments later. Two rabbits in the bag and it's time to move on, but the subterranean members of this party aren't so keen to head off. It's back to digging. However, the ferrets start to move and the action comes thick and fast. The shooters are soon feeding the shotguns a rapid diet of Ely cartridges and rabbits go down one after another, but they're all to Stuart's browning. Steve is just an observer. The ferrets are easily retrieved and the rabbits swell the bag. It's time to head to the final hole of the day. We've swapped the head cam in case this was putting Steve off his shooting. Any excuse, hey? Derek places the polecat down the hole for the last time and a final rabbit falls to Steve. Stuart graciously letting him boost his tally for the day. Derek, you've been uh, ferreting a long time. Can you tell me how long and how did it all start for you? Well, I'm 75 years old now, and I, start, I, got, I purchased my first ferrets when I was 13 years old. I'd been out with other guys previous to that, but that was the first thing, and I paid 10 shillings, which is 50 pence in the, the currency now, for the two ferrets. After a number of years, 
I done national service, and then I got back into the ferreting again. And it's been a good service for the sh for the farmers, because eight rabbits is the equivalent of one sheep on the land eating the grazing. So they're 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 delighted with the with the rabbits that we catch. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, what what is it about ferreting that just fascinated you and made you want to do it for your whole life? Well, I've always been an outdoor person. But you see more than catching rabbits when you're out. You see foxes, you see birds, you see all the different types of wildlife. And uh, I can settle when I go back home after being out all day. Yeah. Uh, what are the perfect conditions for ferreting? The perfect conditions is no wind and a good sunny dry day. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can hear the rabbits getting chased under the holes. You can hear them running around with the ferrets chasing them. And we, I usually net them and catch them in purse nets. Okay. And your best day? I've had 45 two or three times. I've never been able to hit the 50, but I've had 30 many of times. Can you tell me a little bit about the, the ferrets you use? Do you breed your own? I breed my own and I swap with my friend Colin. If we want a change and we can bring in a different breed. And uh, the ferrets that we're using today are pole cats. Okay. And you can get a cross with a pole cat and a white ferret and it comes out ginger in colour. And you can get the albino ones, and they've got pink eyes. These ones have got black, dark eyes with pole cats. So what do you look for in a good ferret for ferreting? Well, the, the one that comes to hand. Mm -hmm. and f because the ferrets, if you handle them regularly, they're, they're just like kittens. Mm -hmm. And um, once you try them, it's natural for them just to chase the rabbits. And, mm -hmm. and some days you get it where they just don't want to bolt. Occasionally, yes. And What is the reason for that? I don't know. It's uh, just one of these things. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, and some days I've seen me putting the nets on and the rabbits were bolting before I even put the ferret in the hole. Mm. And uh, we've seen you today using a finder so that yeah. you could locate the ferrets. Can you tell me how that works? Well, there's a collar on the ferret mm -hmm. and you've got the locator. You turn it on and it gives a clicking sound. And when you turn it down and when it cuts out and you put it back on again, that tells you where it is and the depth it is under the ground. Mm -hmm. And how often do you find yourself digging well, in Well, sometimes quite often, but sometimes it's only about that much. Yeah. But the, today it was very stony and it was very difficult to dig. With all the rabbits paunched, the ferrets recovered and the guns safely in the truck, it's time to head home after a successful excursion to the Blacua State Rabbit Warrens. And now from frenzied ferrets to news hounds, it's the Shoot and Share News. This is the Shooting Show News. The RSPCA is facing increasing heat over the way it uses charity funds. Its senior executives have been summoned to meet the head of the Charity Commission after the high-profile prosecution of the Haythrop Hunt. While other wildlife crimes went unprosecuted, the charity spent £326,000 prosecuting the hunt and its members. The Countryside Alliance's Tim Bonner said the RSPCA had minimal interest in some forms of animal cruelty and was more interested in pushing a political agenda. Royal Mail will open another consultation on its carriage of firearms at the end of January. Last year it consulted on banning all shotguns, firearms and air guns from its service, as well as their components. But after hundreds of shooters and shooting organisations opposed the ban, it opted for a rethink. Now, Royal Mail's carriage of Section 1 and 2 firearms will come under the spotlight again. Basque has said it will issue a call to action if necessary. Brussels hosted EU leaders, researchers and shooting industry representatives for a discussion on lead ammunition last week. Many MEPs supported a complete phase-out of lead shot in wetlands, though the UK and several other countries are carrying out studies into lead, the results of which will be shared in March. President of the European Parliament's Sustainable Hunting Group, Véronique Mathieu, said it has not been demonstrated that any potential residual lead in game meat could have any influence on health. The National Wildlife Crime Unit could be forced to close in just two months if the Home Office does not guarantee future funding. Over 100 MPs signed an early day motion for the government to pledge funding for the unit, which runs out at the end of March. 
the unit has exposed crimes such as badger baiting, reptile smuggling, and rhino horn trading, but the Home Office remains silent on whether it will receive further support. And finally, a new game fair dedicated to Deerstalkers will open on the 23rd and 24th of March at the Borders Union Agricultural Society showground in Kelso on the Scottish Borders. Two exhibition halls and over 40 acres of grounds will see all manner of stalking-related stalls such as stalking outfitters, game dealers and gun makers, and events including a talk on tracking wounded deer with scent hounds and a 100 square meter trophy display. That was the Shooting Show News. The SHOT Show in Las Vegas is the biggest gun show in the world. From sporting small bars to tactical trappings and the big guns, it's got it all. We've spent the show sniffing out a selection of new kit for shooters back in the UK. First up, the new Remington rifle. Yeah, we're here at the 2013 SHOT Show. This is the new Remington Model 783. This is a project that we've been working on for about two years now. And it's a rifle that we've designed to really hit a very specific price point in between our Model 770 and our Model 700 SPS. But from day one, the driving requirements behind this rifle have been accuracy, reliability, durability, and we've hit on all accounts, including the price point that we were trying to hit. We started off with a round cylindrical receiver. You know, at Remington, we have a lot of history with round body receivers in the Model 700. But with this one, we've gone one step further in terms of rigidity and not removing any material that wasn't necessary for this rifle. We've gone to a minimum size ejection port, it had no scalloping on top, just completely round. It's fed with a detachable box magazine. Okay, three rounds for a belted magnum, four rounds standard. To all of the chamberings, whether it's long action, short action, or magnum, we have our heaviest sporter weight barrel in our magnum contour barrel. And again, that was done strictly for accuracy and rigidity. First for Remington, we're tying the barrel and the receiver together with a barrel nut system. This allows us in manufacturing to headspace every single rifle to the absolute minimum side, a key, you know, key dimension for, for holding accuracy. You know, the, the bolt transitions back and forth very nicely. It's a 90 degree bolt throw with two twin locking lugs there. We have a trigger block trigger on this, which allows us to set the trigger at the factory at three and a half pounds. But by pulling the barreled action out of the stock is consumer adjustable. Consumer could take this down under three pounds or could go as heavy as five if for some reason they wanted to raise trigger pull. Position on the safety is a two position safety. I'm dropping this into an injection molded stock that's pillar bedded so we're completely free floated from the barrel nut all the way forward. And then also on the stock, we've added our premium patented Remington Supercell recoil pad, which takes up to 54% of the recoil out of the gun. So you know, all together, all this ties together to really you know, bring you a, a performance rifle that's hitting that price point and is going to deliver you know, the, the accuracy that everybody's come to expect out of Remington. Exciting stuff from the Americans, and rifle maker Savage also got in on the act unveiling their new BMAG rimfire, chambered in the revolutionary 1.7 Winchester Super Magnum. It's billed as the fastest rimfire in the world, travelling at 3,000 feet per second and delivering centerfire performance for a rimfire price. Let's hope we see the Savage BMAG on these shores soon. Browning's finest rep Danny gives us the rundown on the A5 shotgun that is fast becoming a firm favourite with stateside shooters. Our A5 is uh, our entry into the recoil operated semi-auto shotgun. The horse is recoil operated, uh, it has a bent rib, uh, looks very reminiscent of our old Auto 5 and we did that on purpose, kind of a retro look to our gun. It comes in uh, Three different models. We have the stalker model with the composite stock. We have camo models in three different camos. The gun is also now available in three and a half. It's been very well received by American hunters. Uh, it's been out in the field for about a year now and uh, very good reports back from the field. Next, we visited the Insight stand for the inside track on deer supplements and attractants. A practice almost unknown in the UK, I asked quintessential southerner Steve Stone if it was big business in the US. Yes, it is. Yes, it is, Peter. One, one thing that we, we are not only use products as attractants, but we also use them as a nutritional supplement, especially in, in, in the times in, our, in, in the states here where we're having a drought. 
we're dealing with issues of, of, of lack of energy and so we're able to supplement deer with product like this Bucknut product. This product has 20% fat, has 13% protein, 31% sugar, provides a tremendous amount of energy to deer. So it helps them supplement through those hard times, whether it's winter, post-rut, pre-rut, especially post-rut after these, the bucks have really worn themselves down. It's kind of a recovery product. And so we, we try and supplement energy to get these animals back into condition, get them ready to produce that antler for the next year. But you can take this product and supplement a tremendous amount of energy, but with that strong peanut aroma, it brings those deer in and gives you an opportunity to seed a lot more additional bucks so you don't have to just take the first buck that comes in. It gives you a selection, Peter, and that's a great opportunity for a hunter to have a choice. And hey, I've, I've got another product. Can I talk about this? Yeah, absolutely. Listen, Peter, this product is called Buck Strut. And in the States, typically what we use as a liquid attractant to bring deer in, they're typically a salt water base. But our product is a sugar-based product. There's 48% sugar. It has a strong, pungent fruit smell. You can actually take this product, apply it onto a decaying log. You can put this product and apply it to the dirt. You can mix it with corn and put it there as a supplement. But this product right here, when it dries, it'll actually incorporate the sugar into the log. So when that buck comes back after it dries, he'll paw on that log and continue to hunt for this sugar. It's almost like a candy bar that's a sugar lick that allows him to come back. And so give us a chance to, to, to share with you our information. Go to our website. It's www.insightsnutrition.com www.insightsnutrition.com We won't be forgetting those tips in a hurry and with trophies like these around the show you know the Americans are doing something right when it comes to trophy management. Now let's find out what's new from ammunition company Gecko. Well this bullet has been introduced like a couple of months before and uh, we've uh, shown it to a lot of journalists and a lot of pro shooters and it's been very well perceived because it means the US saves very much. It's a, a bullet with a very high ballistic coefficient and that's very well uh, accepted already in the US market. What makes this bullet really unique is that it has a hollow point in the tip. That's very unique. No other bullet has that. Yeah. And even on very long shots, when the bullet velocity drops a little bit, the performance is still very, very, very explosive and will always put the animal down right in the tracks just like that. It's a cost-effective bullet, yet though it's a premium bullet for the US market, it's, it's produced to German quality standards. You definitely get a lot of bang for your buck. Yeah, that's what really what that brand stands for. Gecko is all you need. It's cost-effective, yet very high quality and a very compact line that really gives the dealer and the, and the shooter all they need for hunting. Spot on. Hannes, thank you very much. And finally, we got the word on some shooting stick innovations from Primos. Okay, Kenny, can you tell me about the Primos trigger stick, please? Uh, yes, this is the new uh, Primos trigger stick Gen 2 for 2013. This is the Jim Shockey edition tripod. Uh, what we have for this year is new silent coatings on the legs for nice, smooth operation on the legs up and down. A nice fluid pan heads for nice uh, turning, rotating your scope, your gun. A trigger lock. So once you have your desired height set, you can lock lock the legs and it won't the trigger won't move in case you accidentally bump it so once you set it to your height you can it's lock it and you're ready to go once again the, the yoke can come off you can attach a spotting scope binoculars a video camera also for this year is a uh, two-point gun rest that attaches to the top of the trigger sticks a lot of guys are shooting this time Gives you a nice, steady, solid rock hold, very adjustments up and down, back and forth. Once again, we'll, we'll attach to any of the trigger sticks. Like our trigger sticks come in a tall, a short, a bipod, and a short, a mono, and a short tripod. So it covers all bases of your trigger sticks. Uh, they work great as a walking stick, just keeping balance as you're hiking, and just gives you that steady support for a rock solid shop. We found Elvis was alive and well at SHOT Show. I'm not sure what the collective noun is for a trio of Elvis impersonators, but we found a covey of them. All in one cane to get among the guns and enjoy the show. Thank you very much. And Vegas wouldn't be Vegas without a resident gunslinger. Joey shows us why he's Hollywood's favourite stand-in for Wild West action shots.
Well, that's it from Shot Show 2013. We're out every Monday, 7.30pm UK time. Thanks for watching. This is The Shooting Show.